Well, happy Friday to you, God's people at Grace. It's actually Thursday night as I record this. And originally, I recorded this with our DCE, Christine Young, on Wednesday morning. In fact, you're going to see her at the end of this as she gives an update on student ministry and some opportunities for parents. So I encourage you to watch all the way through. But after filming this on Wednesday night, most of you have heard by now that the Supreme Court came back with its ruling on the power of the governor and his appointees. And by proxy, what that ramification has on the Safer at Home Edict. And because of that, I've had many people who begin to ask me the question, so pastor, what does that mean for grace? What does that mean about worship? What does about that mean about in-person ministry? What, is, what does this mean for grace? And I know at grace, we have people all along the spectrum. We have some people who have basically said, so that means that we can just start worshiping on Sunday and anybody who wants to come can come and we're just going to open the doors as if we're just business as usual, ministry as usual. And then we have some on the other side who have said, Pastor, I don't think we should do anything till there's a vaccine. So even if that takes three years, we shouldn't do anything till then. And then there are people all across the spectrum in the middle. So I want to explain where we're at at Grace and kind of give you that pathway forward. Please understand that as we make decisions at Grace, that there are three general principles that we use to guide our decisions during this time, uh, during this whole time since uh, everything began. And the first principle is this, that just because something is legal doesn't make it wise. And so something can be legal, but it isn't wise for us to do at that moment in time. The second one is that we want to always be able to do ministry with excellence, but in a way that is safe for God's people. And third, and most importantly, we want to be faithful to the Lord and trust in him. We want to be faithful to the Lord and trust in, in his direction for us. So as we do that, please know that the staff has begun to have the conversations that are necessary about what it means to re-enter into in-person ministry. Today, Thursday, I was on about three hours worth of Zoom calls, uh, online calls for those who don't know what Zoom is, with pastors from our circuit, pastors from our district. Uh, our staff met for a little bit this morning, and we have a meeting next week to spend a lot of time going through the process and plan of what it might look like to create a strategy and a timeline to move back to in-person ministry. Understand that the entire staff, our desire is to re-enter into in-person ministry. It's what God originally intended for his people. It's why Jesus in John 1 it said that the word Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. He was in the flesh with us. And that's what God wants for us, for our community. He wants us to be in the flesh with one another. But as we talk about re-entering into in-person, in-flesh ministry, we want to make sure that we do it the right way at the right time with the right processes in place. A well thought out and strategic way of doing this. And so we're going to continue to meet about that. And the staff is going to come up with a strategy and a timeline for re-entering into in-person ministry. And as we do that, with the processes that are necessary, we will begin to communicate that to you. So next week, uh, we will have more updates on what this means for us, on possible timelines and marks and processes. But we ask that you would be patient and understand that we are not right now this weekend re-entering into in-person worship. We are going to do it at the right time in the right way. And so we would ask from you for three things. Those three things is, first of all, we would ask you to be patient. We know that many of you are, are chomping at the bit to get back to in-person ministry, and we cannot wait to see you again. We miss you, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you. But be, please be patient in this process. The second thing, please be prayerful. 
pray for us. Pray for the team. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the staff as we begin to have these conversations so that God might guide us and direct us on how to do ministry with excellence in a safe way that is wise for the sake of all of God's people here at Grace. And the third thing is live out and display the name of our church, Grace. We've been saying this all along. Have grace for one another. Have grace for your own emotions. Have grace for everybody else's emotions and their perspective. We're all going through the same thing. We're just going through it a little bit differently. So please be patient, be in prayer, and show grace. And we're going to continue to update you on everything along the way from how we're going to re-enter into in-person ministry and rebuild those ministries back up to what is going on with graduation and confirmation, vacation Bible school and generate retreats, all of those things we will update you on. But please be patient, prayerful, and show grace. We also wanted to encourage you with some of the things that are going on in our student ministry right now. And in fact, that's why uh, Christine is here with us to talk about that. So uh, just a couple of questions as uh, as we do talk about student ministry, obviously being done in a different way, but but as we do student ministry in a different way, we're continuing to do it. So what does that look like as we continue to care for our children and youth in student ministry? Yeah, so since this whole crisis began, we moved JM Thrive Ignite lessons to a digital format. So those lessons have been sent out every single Sunday um, with activities and uh, teaching videos and discussion questions. And our hope and prayer is that that creates spiritual and faith discussions in the home, uh, maybe for the first time. Um, so we're hoping that those lessons have been a blessing and those will continue to be provided during this time. Um, as a church, we've always believed that parents are the primary influence in a child's faith development. And now all that faith development is taking place um, in the home, but we still want to partner with you um, in raising your child up in the faith. Um, so we're continuing to offer those lessons every week. Um, I'm also available via Zoom for our children and our youth, Sunday through Thursday from 2 to 5 p.m., kind of my Zoom office hours uh, for any child or any youth or just your entire family um, that needs some extra support or care or just wants to talk. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know, we talked about this in the message this past weekend, but you talked about the importance of the home and how we really believe that that homes should be that sacred space for spiritual growth, that, that God created the homes in a sacred way. So, you know, not on accident. He put us in the homes we're in with the people we're in so that we can do spiritual growth together. And, and so we just want to encourage you as you get those resources, use them. This is the perfect time to do it when we're at home a lot with each other. Yes, so, <laughs> absolutely. Ha yeah, have those sacred conversations. So, so you mentioned uh, during this time uh, the discipleship that's going on for our children and youth, um, and it's happening in homes. But we know our homes are filled with a lot of things right now. Yes. Uh, our homes are schools. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they're getting the education still from their teachers, but then parents are helping them with it more. Uh, it's the offices that, for many people right now. It's where we do our workouts. It's basically where we're living 24-7 almost mm -hmm. right now. And so our houses are filled with a lot, a lot being thrown at parents. So what are we doing to resource and to support our parents during a time like this? Yeah, so parenting has always been difficult, but in this season, it's even more difficult. I mean, if you have younger kids, it's really hard to get any work done. If you have teenagers, you're probably struggling with the ever-changing emotions and uh, feelings that are coming up at a time like this. Um, so uh, we've partnered with uh, Christian Family Services. Uh, our Deaconess Christiana and I and myself are actually going to be offering a free Zoom webinar on May 18th at 7 p.m. for our parents. And this will be led by a professional licensed counselor from Christian Family Services um, that has 20 years of experience to offer you with strategies and tips of how to parent well during this season, which is such a challenge. But um, we're hoping that we can help you um, really parent well and care for your children well during this time. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we know there is a lot being thrown at parents right now. Absolutely. And so calendars get really full really fast, as crazy as that sounds, <laughs> even in this different season. Mm -hmm. and, and yet our encouragement is make room in your calendar, make time and space 
for you to be a part of this conversation because it is a way that we want to equip you as God's people with tools, even if you think you have them already, to continue to walk with your children through this period of crisis. So really want to encourage you to be a part of that parent webinar. So it's yeah. really awesome. The registration is online and all you have to do is put in your name and your email address and you'll get the link to join that webinar. If you aren't familiar with Zoom webinar, you don't even have to show your face. Um, all you're doing is interacting in a chat box if you'd like and you can submit questions for a Q&A at the end. So it's really a great resource and an opportunity for our parents to be resourced and supported during this really difficult time. Cool. Awesome. So we know that uh, when May rolls around, usually you have confirmation going on and, and we know that's going to look a little bit different. Parents are still giving feedback on what that's going to look like and decisions being made. And, and, uh, but usually with the end of the school year, kind of jam, thrive, ignite, they, they wind down for the summer. And, and uh, usually we don't have Sunday morning children's ministry during the summer and ignite does more maybe like campfires. And yeah, we definitely moved to more event-based yeah. ministry. Yeah. So what is going on now as we get to the end of the summer and as you look forward to, or as we look forward to what's going on throughout this summer? Yeah. So we can't wait for the day that we are able to connect again with our children and our youth face to face. Um, but until that can happen, we're going to continue to provide those digital resources for discipleship to be done in the home. Um, but the thing that really bums me out about missing the end of the school year is the chance to appreciate our student ministry volunteers. So our Jam and Thrive teachers and our Ignite small group leaders are really this incredible group of people that are dedicated to making sure this next generation has a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they have just done such phenomenal ministry this year. Um, so if you're one of those leaders, I want to thank you for the ministry that you've done this year. And if you know one of those leaders, or if one of those leaders have touched your child or your teenager's life this year, please show them appreciation since we're not able to do that in the typical fashion towards this end of this student ministry season. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so we do want to say thank you. Thanks to all those who are serving, who have served. Uh, we know that on uh, Sunday nights, most people probably don't know this unless you're a part of this, our youth leaders get together still. And they've been having Zoom meetings to talk about the youth ministry, been trying to connect with them. And there's just been a lot going on. So we're so thankful for all those that continue to serve during this season. So Absolutely. And thank you, Christine, for being here today. So uh, if you have any other questions about student ministry, uh, things that are going on in our student ministry for our youth and children, uh, please reach out to Christine. She'd love to answer your questions. But uh, just uh, that's our update for this Friday. Uh, next week, we will give you a, a bigger financial update, kind of just want to give you as God's people a picture of what's been going on with generosity and expenses and what that all looks like and what that means for us here at Grace. So, so I'll give that update uh, next week. But thanks again for joining us. God's blessings. And we'll talk again soon.